turns. Now, let's present this data in the form of a graph. We're going to create our first supply curve. As we did with our first demand curve, we'll start by plotting the axes and indicate the origin. Then, we'll assign the price of the good P to the vertical axis and the quantity supplied, QS, to the horizontal axis. Then, the intervals. In this, seven equally spaced ones on each axis, followed by the corresponding values from the table. That's one rand, two rand, three, four, five, six, and seven. And two pieces, four pieces, six, eight, ten, twelve, and fourteen. Now, we plot the different price quantity supplied combinations. At seven rand, fourteen pieces are supplied. At six rand, twelve pieces, and so on. When we draw a line joining the points and label SS, we have our first supply curve, indicating the quantities of a good or service that the funky chicken plans to sell at each possible price. A movement from point A to B shows that as the price of the fried chicken increases from 4 rand to 6 rand, the quantity supplied increases too, from 8 to 12, and an upward movement along the curve takes place. Likewise, if the price drops, a movement down the curve takes place. But how does the supply curve differ from the demand curve for fried chicken pieces? Well, the demand curve shows that a higher price leads to a lower quantity demanded. But with the supply curve, a higher price leads to a higher quantity supplied. So that is the law of supply, which states that the higher the price, the higher the quantity supplied, and the lower the price, the lower the quantity supplied.